Dear brothers and sisters, I greet you on this Maundy Thursday. How do you remember something? I must admit, I am sometimes a little bit forgetful and so for me it's quite useful to have some things that help me to remember things. So my diary or lists that I make or reminders on my phone are all very helpful reminders of the things that I need to remember. If I think back to my school time, we used to learn certain rhymes to remember, for example, in physics, to remember all those formulas that I somehow had to get into my head. And the crazy thing is, some of these formulas are actually still stuck in my mind now, many, many, many years later. These things have a tendency to stick in one's mind for years. Our watchword for today is taken from Psalm 111 verse 4 and it also speaks of remembering and it speaks of remembering something that is much more important than physics formulas. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. How do we remember the wonders of the Lord? How do we remember his grace and compassion? The most obvious way is in the way that believers tell stories of the things that they have experienced with God. A well-told story can stick in the mind for many years, particularly when the one who is telling the story is somebody who is a credible person that people believe. We can encourage each other by telling each other what God has done in our lives. And this will cause God's wonders to be remembered. Let us be encouraged by each other's stories. Some stories are so amazing that books or even movies are made of it. And of course, they can then encourage a much wider group of believers than just a few in the circle of friends in a local church. In biblical times, the most profound experiences with God were written down and passed on from generation to generation. And eventually, they became scripture, a written witness of God's wonders and acts in the world. But then, some memories and experiences of God's wonders are so profound so definitive in our faith that they go beyond just a written down story. Some events that show us God's goodness are so powerful that they are remembered in a living ritual that we can do over and over again. And every time we are reminded anew, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. In the Old Testament times, the most profound such event was the Exodus, without a doubt. Not only is it written down in minute detail in the scriptures, but it is remembered once a year in the Jewish calendar, a festival called Pesach, the Passover. On this day, the Jewish people remember how God spared them when he killed the firstborn of the Egyptian slave masters. And then, how God led them out into the desert, into freedom, out of slavery. And they have passed this tradition on from generation to generation. Some of you will remember how we celebrated a Jewish Passover two years ago here at NGLC on Maundy Thursday. What a special occasion and so full of meaning when we interpret it in the light of what Jesus did many centuries later. And as Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples, less than a day before he died on the cross, he connects this tradition to what he did. And that then formed the whole new tradition for those who believed in Jesus. And we call this tradition Holy Communion. Instituted by Jesus himself and remembered ever since. Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, and this old ritual of Passover took on a whole new meaning, something that connected on a deeper level. Again, 
passed on from generation to generation. I read to you from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. How do we remember the wonders of the Lord? How do we remember his grace and compassion? Yes, we can certainly tell the stories that are written down in Scripture. And as we are drawn into these stories, we get a deeper understanding of God's wonders and of his grace and compassion. And we can tell of our own recent experiences of God's grace and compassion in our lives. But sometimes we can take part in something that connects us on a deeper level with the wonders of God. And Holy Communion is one such occasion. The Passover was adapted many times over the centuries in different settings and then given a totally different meaning by Jesus on that night in which he was betrayed. But the central message remained the same. God is for us and his grace and compassion draw us to him and he brings us to a place of freedom and redemption. And even in church history, Holy Communion was shaped and adapted many times, but the central message remains the same. So as many of you celebrate Holy Communion in your own home tonight, we again have to adapt the form to suit the circumstance. But the central message, the central meaning remains. God has given himself for us in his Son, Jesus Christ, so that we may be part of his eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen.